Uh, good morning. It is the 7th of December in the year of our Lord, 2013 AD. Yes, I do love the say. It is a Saturday, the day after St. Nicholas Day, and, um, oh, the temperature in Vancouver, well, I'm not in Vancouver, I'm in a bedroom community called Surrey, which is kind of like Chelsea in London. I lie, actually. Surrey is, uh, let us say, the humblest of Vancouver's bedroom communities, but I want to show you. Henceforth, I shall provide evidence for everything I say from now on, but only when asked for it. Okay, so this is the temperature right now where I is at. And keep in mind, this is in the Fahrenheit scale, as I refuse to use Celsius centigrade for reasons that I've already explained. Here we are. Don't take my word for it. Oh, there it is. You see that? Surrey, 22 degrees. Fahrenheit. Now, where I grew up in Newport News, Virginia yesterday, the high temperature reached 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, well, uh, it's hot. It's too hot for me. Anything above 65 Fahrenheit in the shade is uncomfortable for me. But that's, hey, but that's me. Maybe that has something to do with the fact that I'm anorexically challenged because, well, you understand the physics of it. Now, I told you before that Syria is a little colder on average than Vancouver in the winter. But right now, Vancouver is uh, 19 degrees. Okay, what the hell, I'm not going to be a fanatic. 19 degrees is about uh, 10, 13, 7, minus 7 centigrade. Um, I'm not sure, but it's between minus 7 and... Minus six centigrade, I guess. By the way, did you know that the um, Celsius and uh, Fahrenheit scales, can I use the word bisect? The values are identical at only one temperature, and that's 40, negative 40 degrees. In other words, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit is equal to minus 40 degrees Celsius, or as I prefer to say, centigrade. What was I going to talk about? Oh, I wanted to tell you why I'm so silly, why I refuse to be um, serious most of the time. And forgive me, I'm going to wax serious for just a moment. I was a happy child and a happy, carefree fun-loving um, youth. And then I had the singular misfortune of having been brainwashed by a religious cult called the Watchtower Jehovah Witnesses. And they stole three years of my young life between the time I was 16 years old and almost 19. Now they told me that the world the wicked world was going to end on October 4th or 5th, 1975 CE, not AD, CE. And when the world didn't end, I quit. Did I forgive them? Forgiving them is a work in progress. What would I do to Jehovah's Witnesses if I became supreme dictator of the world? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. That's crazy. But I'll tell you one thing. I recently learned that Jehovah's Witnesses have been banned once again in Russia, and they're forbidden to try to... Uh, um, they break up families, you see. When they brainwash somebody, that often ends up breaking up families and uh, 
it causes a, the troublemakers it causes a lot of uh, anyways I'll say this one last thing about Jehovah's Witnesses they claim that they are Christians but not only that they claim they are the only Christians I shit you not Jehovah's Witnesses believe that they are the only real Christians and yet they own and operate no soup kitchens they own and operate no homeless shelters or hospitals or any services to the poor and the lion's share of their charity goes either to the watchtower organization itself for the printing of yet more propaganda or to Jehovah Witnesses self name Jehovah's Witnesses themselves so let's look at these facts and feel free to investigate it on the internet Jehovah's Witnesses believe that they are the only Christians and yet they operate no homeless shelters no hospitals and no soup kitchens not exactly what Jesus had in mind understand I don't claim to be the best Christian in the world I might be the biggest you know you know not many people bigger than me but not the best I'm backslid like most people but I'll tell you one thing I'll say something good about my time with Jehovah's Witnesses when I finally escaped mentally and spiritually from that um, sinister group called the Watchtower Jehovah's Witnesses the feeling of freedom was indescribable it must be like when some man has done 20 years in prison for a crime he didn't commit and all of a sudden DNA evidence has shown beyond the shadow of a doubt that he was innocent all along and he's released that feeling of freedom that only he who has been a cult member and liberated or or he who has done a lot of time in prison and then is released only these kind of people can truly appreciate freedom to the max there's a saying in German I forget how it goes but only he who knows the rain can really no how's it go nur wer den regen kennt kennt auch den sonnenschein no you really appreciate the sunshine when you live in a rainy place pacific northwest let me tell you about the pacific northwest because i've lived here for uh, around 30 years now so far and you hardly ever in the Vancouver area you hardly ever see the stars I remember where I grew up you could drive for a few miles to where there was uh, minimal light pollution at night and you'd see a zillion stars I'm told no I actually saw it I I have driven across the prairies the Canadian prairies in the winter at night and I've looked up to the sky and zillions of brilliant stars and I'm told that in the uh, in the desert southwest if you go to a place that's unpolluted either by light uh, that has no light or uh, air pollution the the stars are just it's it's just breathtaking it's amazing it's amazing and uh, no, but okay, I'm going to end this at minute 10. But um, I just want to say, in all seriousness, I have long since forgiven the organization called Jehovah's Witnesses. And uh, I never had anything against the individual members because they, they were brainwashed every bit as much as I was. So, right, take care. God bless. Goodbye.